Welcome to the Train Like a King podcast, dedicated to all things paddling, designed to help paddlers of all levels get motivated to get out on the water. Tune in, grab your paddle, and let's train like a king. Kia ora guys, and welcome back to another Train Like a King episode. This episode is titled The Make or Break Point. And the reason I want to talk about the make or break point is last episode, I talked about, you know, the early days and first taste of victory. Um, And at that time, I was still at high school, but I want to kind of talk about that transition period from high school um, to, in my case, university um, or in other people's cases, maybe transitioning from high school to employment going straight into um, trades or, or, or whatever, um, because it's a difficult period. It's a difficult period that I refer to as the make or break point, because you've no longer got that support from your parents um, and maybe your community coaches and teachers and, and that, um, you know, you kind of like leave your nest and you go out on your own and tackle the real world and um, in my case like I said I from I'm from the far north and I chose to go back to I chose to go to university in Waikato in Hamilton and so that is a pretty significant distance from home and I went straight into flatting with went straight into flatting with um, schoolmates from Kaitaia College um, didn't stay in the halls of residence, you know, so, but I did have multiple flats in and around Hamilton. And yeah, you know, you're, you get thrown out into the real world and you've, like I said, no longer have that support. So it's a real crucial period, I guess, in, in a young person's life, because it's that make or break point. And it's so easy to 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 move on to something else in the in the context of wakama or even rugby for example um i still i was still playing rugby in my last year of high school but i suffered some pretty bad disloco shoulder dislocations which caused me to to stop playing rugby you know i had to either get surgery or take a year off and i took the year off but i i never went back um and then even when in the first few years of of studying, you know, you can get into the the partying lifestyle and, you know, you're, um, a, I guess, a young adult navigating life. Um, and I wasn't actually paddling. Like I, I, even though I had quite a successful last year at high school paddling world, I, in 2012, when I went to university, there were moments where I, I pretty much stopped paddling and, um, yeah, I always talk about this being that real crucial make or break point for me because I could have easily, um, just continued on that path and of, of not, not paddling. And, um, the truth is I, I actually start, I even started getting pretty, heavy and over I want to say you know was probably from the partying that you do at university and and not really controlling what I eat and 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 stuff like that so yeah there was a period where I was yeah not on not on the best path not a bad path wouldn't say it was a real bad path but you know I wasn't playing rugby anymore wasn't um doing paddling anymore you know I was just living the student life so however the the course that I was studying at university was sport and leisure studies. And so the more I studied, the more I learned about training, physiology, um, although it was a very uh, broad degree that I was taking, I was always most interested in the physiology of training, you know, nutrition, energy systems, just the way that the body, you know, 
functioned. That was always the best, my favorite part of um, my courses. You know, whereas, say, sports psychology or um, um, socials or uh, those other kind of things didn't appeal to me as much, you know, so I, um, so I kind of, I kind of became my own experiment in the end. Um, I started putting what I had learned at university to use. And here's the truth. <laughs> here's a funny truth is that in 2012, what got me motivated again was actually CrossFit and the, watching the CrossFit games. So, um, Rich Froning, you know, watching like a day in the life of Rich Froning, that actually got me motivated to get back, get into the gym. Um, so I got in, you know, got it, got in, you know, I got a gym membership at the university and I started doing these trainings like CrossFit and I wound up getting really fit again. Like, so I got, so I was at my highest um weight wise i was probably 100 and i want to say 106 kgs so that's even quite heavy for me now sitting at around 93 95 kgs pretty consistently now but to put it in perspective i went from 106 kgs right down to about 85 kgs which was which is an insane insanely lightweight for me i wouldn't recommend it on anyone um you know performance wise uh you know if you're pedaling or if you're just playing any sport you don't want to drop that much weight and you're likely your performance is likely to be bad but in this case i was i was just doing it to get fit and pushing new boundaries i was also like learning how to, to eat better and carbohydrates and you know low glycemic carbohydrates and all this stuff. And I was just testing it, but I, I do admit I did push it to the limits. I pushed it to the limits, but it was good because it taught me what is possible and, um, went from 106 to 85 kilos. And I was, I just remember being super, super fit, super lean, leaner than I'd ever been before. Um, but yeah, it was not easy and it wasn't sustainable for a long time periods of time however so crossfit kind of got me fit again and you know it was getting towards the end of the year um year again and like i said national sprints happens in january so i thought hey i'm already fit you know because i was doing all these crazy wads or workouts of the day nothing heavy um but so i thought oh i'll go back and give wakama nationals another go and so, you know, I jumped in the waka again, pretty close to nationals and did my regionals and, and went on and competed in both my first year under 23s for the 500 meter um, W1 and my first open men's race in the, the 250 meter dash. So this is the, this is 2013 now. Um, so like I said, all of that change happened in 2012 where I wasn't paddling, but I got fit again in the gym and then decided to do 2013 nationals. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't win the under 23s, the 500 meter, um, that was Joshua Peresi, who was dominating that period of time, um, not just the 23s, but the, the junior 19s before that. Man, he had some pretty epic years there where we were just in his wake. Um, but somehow I managed to win the open men 250 meter dash on a whim. And that was a pretty significant turning point for me. Um, because basically, and I don't want to cut into future episodes of what I'm about to talk about in terms of future trips and that, but I will note that it did lead to my first invite to a trip to Tahiti and I'll talk about that in another episode but so what I'm so in terms of the make or break point that that was my make or break point um was leaving high school going to university 
stopping paddling and you know I probably could have easily um easily drifted away drifted away from from sport but that university and learning about sport and all of that that's what kind of brought me back which was which was pretty I'm pretty re- very grateful for now um and yeah so I guess to anyone out there listening whether you're a rangatahi who's in that about to depart on that make or break point and phase in life um you know make sure you know do what you love do what you love chase what you love and sometimes you do have to sacrifice things give things up but just know that you can always come back even if you've um it's a good thing about our sport you can have a six month break 12 month break you can have a 10 year break and you can always come back um so yeah hopefully this this helps even for parents who are trying you know helping their rangatahi navigate that this time just know that um you can always hold on to um sports that you love and you can always make time time for it and it's only gonna benefit your life in the long run i would say because you need that balance you need the balance the four walls taha tinana taha hinangaro taha wairua taha whanau um so always hold on to to every aspect of it like if you put your energy into one thing then you are you're gonna lag in the other you know um like everything sometimes requires some sacrifice in some areas but um just know that yeah you you can do whatever you put your mind to and um that's the theme of this episode and that make or break point hopefully it inspires someone that's listening and thinking yeah i'm right in that make or break point right now um but just know that you can you you've got time (laughs) you've got lots of time and um yeah anyway that's it for this episode thank you guys for listening the next episode i'm going to dive a little bit more deeper into maybe a little bit more of my bachelor's or my master's degree that i finished with and then i'm also going to dive into first trips to tahiti um, and the domino effect from that so thank you guys for listening again and catch you on the next episode Kia ora. Thank you for listening to the Train Like a King podcast. Check out trainlikeaking.com for training plans, coaching opportunities, or even merchandise. Catch you on the next episode.